What's up, guys? Who's your good boy? Who's your good boy? I've got a nice forest landscape picture for you today that I'm gonna show you how to get from looking like this to like this in no time at all. So let's hit it. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is open up your picture in Photoshop. It's actually a little hard to sit in this position when you're taking a photo like this. Prepare for it to be a little awkward. For that reason, I ended up having to fix my horizon because I didn't take it perfectly. It's easy to do in Photoshop. Just take the crop tool and either rotate. You can use the ruler tool and make a straight line if you want. But uh, it was easy enough to just rotate and crop this one. Next thing you want to do is duplicate your layer because that's just what I like to do so I can A-B the difference. Go to your camera raw filter. For photos like this, I tend to just dip back on the highlights, uh, start adding a little contrast to see where my blacks end up. It's pretty nice. I'll boost the shadows a little bit and then bring them back down with the blacks. That's pretty good. Let me see how it looks before and after. That's nice, actually. I'll add a little clarity, but when I do that, I tend to add a little vibrance just because clarity makes it pretty black and white, I find. I skip the tone curves for now. I'll probably add a little sharpness, although I tend to just use Photoshop's sharpness tool for a lot of my sharpness. I'll add a little bit of noise reduction just so it's doing something. All right, this is where a lot of the a lot of the magic happens. So obviously there's lots of oranges, so you probably want to boost them. Usually the yellows are good or bad for me, so it's it's usually either or. There's not really a middle ground for the most part. This picture there's a lot of yellow information. That's pretty good, so I'm gonna dial it in. I'm gonna boost my greens so they can contrast a bit. I want my jeans to contrast a little bit. That's pretty good. There's probably some red information. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So before and after, you know, check it out. That's pretty good. Shadows, okay, so the shadows is pretty neat. This is how you can kind of add a little mood. I tend to just boost it to see what it's gonna look like, and I usually end up loving what happens in the teals. Usually just adds more depth. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do something like that. Tend to just dial it in before it gets a little too cold. Same thing with the shadows. It's usually the orange, especially for this. Dial it in until you think it's a little too warm. Do a before and after. You could probably up this a lot, actually. Usually I don't get to do that much. And that's pretty good. So now I'm going to go over to my tone, or my, sorry, my curve tool. going to go to pretty simple tone adjustment curve. Just basic. Boost the shadows, lower your darks, bring your midtones back up, dip the highlights a bit. It's a little too dark for me, so I'm gonna bring that up a little bit. But I like that. So there's my before and after. Well, that's not so bad, right? Just remember, there's no rules. Sometimes I use a camera raw filter two or even three times. So when you're done with your camera raw filter, I've already got it here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click it on. So what I like to do with this is I like to go up here and I like to add a hue saturation layer, as you can see I have right here. What I like to do is I grab the hand tool up here and it's actually a great way to select colors and then you just drag right or left to saturate or desaturate. And you can also command click and drag right and left to change the hue. So it's super handy for selectively choosing colors you want to enhance or not enhance, de-enhance, whatever that word is. And that's what I came up with after I dabbled with that. And then I added a simple curves tone again because it just added a little more depth, a very similar curve. And then I went up and I found it wasn't quite bright enough so I just brightened it up and then added in some contrast. And I actually went pretty hard with this strictly because it was a pretty artsy photo, it's a little moody. Usually when I've got a picture looking pretty good, I kind of critically look at it and assess it and see if there's anything I can kind of selectively enhance. In this case, it was the shoes. And then lastly, the last thing I did was I enhanced my shoes specifically. So I made a mask around my shoes using the quick selection and just editing it a little bit. And then you end up with something like that. And I did a camera raw filter to just my shoes. And then I went in and I selectively enhanced my blues and my shoes and then I just made it a little brighter, just like the other layer up here with some contrast. I've kind of been in a dark tone, high contrast mood lately, because summer's over. And then I'm pretty sure after I did that, I went into the last layer here and went into the camera raw filter and then added a little vignetting. And then I add my watermark for my photography profile, and there you have it. That's the finished product, so I'll show you the before and the after. 
I hope that helps you guys out. We got lots of cool tutorials on the way with some Premiere Pro tutorials from my man Sean Thomas. If you got any questions or any comments, leave them below. All of our Instagrams will be in the description below. Make sure you check them out and I'll see you next time.